When we were in transition year, uh, we won the silver award in the Young Social Innovators competition. We did a project on the importance of breastfeeding and the kind of, I suppose, the social stigma that surrounds breastfeeding. Why breastfeeding, the breastfeeding rates in Ireland are so low compared to other countries. Um, we chose Mother Nature Knows Breast as the title for our project. Because what was the original one? Boobies for newbies. Boobies for newbies. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we were like, maybe we won't put that. We, we had like, That's boobies for newbies was like our social boobies media name. Yeah. 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 But when we started this whole project, like, really, we couldn't find anything to go on at the beginning because literally nobody talks about it. We don't breastfeed. Like, we have like one of the lowest rates in all of Europe. And then because we don't breastfeed, more kids are in hospital and there's like economic impacts and there's healthcare impacts and there's so much and it was just kind of like, none of us knew this. <laughs> I was the project manager, so I kind of like cracked the whip a little. <laughs> Myself and Nicole were on the social media team. Yeah, I think that was really good because we got to actually connect with real people who were in, you know, breastfeeding and experiencing the things that we were talking about in our project. Um, myself and Katie were on the research team. So we just kind of collected as much information as we could along with a few others in the class. And I organised a lot of things behind the scenes, so I tried to type <laughs> up interview questions and scripts for the speak outs, all that kind of crack. There was also an art team as well that was yeah. involved in all of the art for the presentation and a music team. We were just kind of like, oh, let's make a documentary. We never really thought about like how much work yeah. was going to have to go into it. The time frame that we had, it just was never going to get done. But here we are. It was definitely yeah. a lot harder than we thought it would be. Yeah. yeah. A project done by students, for students, you know, um, and to kind of reach a great impact like all over the world and especially in Ireland. So um, yeah, I, I hope everyone enjoys our documentary. Ireland has the lowest breastfeeding rate in Europe at 56% compared to Sweden at 98%. This has had an insurmountable impact on everything, from the health of our children to infant death rates and government spending. Like I think back in something like the 40s, our breastfeeding rates were nearly 90% or 98%, something ridiculous. And within 20 years, it had dropped to below 10%. It is something that we're meant to learn in our environment growing up. We're meant to see our mother and our aunties and our cousins and our sisters all breastfeeding. But women in Ireland unfortunately don't have that because they're not surrounded by a breastfeeding culture. They're surrounded by a culture that doesn't understand breastfeeding. So if a mother starts having problems, she very often will be given inaccurate advice and information from well-meaning people, but still inaccurate and very often will end up giving up breastfeeding sooner than she actually wanted to. So we now have a generation who their previous generation didn't breastfeed. So it's no longer normal now to breastfeed, it's normal to bottle feed. Um, you know, I, I suppose part of it maybe too, women being allowed to work after they got married had probably a big part to play in that as well. Like before the 70s, women stayed at home with their children, they minded their children themselves. And when women were able to work, you know, there was very bad, I suppose, maternity leave or benefit at that time as well. Maybe my grandmother's generation would feel that poor people breastfeed so there can be this kind of thing that you don't really want to be now in the modern world to be seen as the poor person. The ingredients in breast milk have yet to be replicated and it's these vital ingredients which lay the foundations for your child's health for the rest of their lives. The breast milk delivers the exact right nutrients for the baby as and when the baby needs it. Colostrum is the first milk that the baby gets. It is really high in, it's really thick, so it's not like milk at all. Um, and it's actually really high in fat. And so again, the benefits of that are, is that the baby will take in very small amounts of colostrum at the very start. And that will help, help the baby survive for the first few days until the woman's milk comes in. For example, if the baby was born at 34 weeks, that breast milk, the components of that breast milk would be different to a baby being born at 40 weeks. The baby's um, tummies are very small, so when the breast milk, um, you know, when the babies take the breast milk, they self-regulate, they don't overfeed. Breast milk also has immunoglobulins in it, which interact with the environment to protect the baby from bacteria and viruses. So, for example, if there was the flu virus out there, the mother's body would pick up that the flu virus was out there and develop an antibody specifically for that virus. 
women are less likely to have breast, certain types of breast cancer, less likely to have ovarian cancer, are five times less likely to have a heart attack if you breastfeed your baby. Breast milk has a, a very high, over 200 different types of sugars, special sugars called oligosaccharides, and they're specifically really important for brain development. Breastfeed, when women are breastfeeding, that the rate of postnatal depression is reduced as well. So again, we have to understand men don't generally get postnatal depression, right? So, you know, we have to really see it as a, almost as a medicine to some degree as well. Breast milk also has stem cells in it, which we all know is really important for the body's growth and development. Breastfeeding doesn't just have uh, the benefits that for whilst you're breastfeeding, you know, there's long-term benefits associated with breastfeeding. Children who are breastfed are much less likely to be obese. And I think, again, from a, you know, a population point of view, that is something that's really, really important. We've got the lowest breastfeeding rates in Europe and the, we are on course to be the fattest country in Europe by 2030. These things are not coincidence. Lack of knowledge and understanding can impair a woman's chance of continuing breastfeeding. This leads to frustrated mothers giving up and turning to formula feeding. The choice you make when choosing to feed your baby can have a huge impact on their health further down the road. While some women may choose either options for various reasons, many are unaware of the actual risks associated with formula feeding. Formula feeding can lead to overfeeding the child, which causes obesity. The immune system of a formula-fed child is significantly weaker, which then leads to more frequent hospital trips. These babies also suffer from more diarrhea and ear infections. Skin-to-skin -skin contact immediately after childbirth, so whether you have an emergency cesarean section, a cesarean section, a, a von Tuss birth, or a normal physiological vaginal birth, the immediate thing would be that the baby is placed on the mother's skin. It's skin-to-skin. -skin. If a baby is skin-to-skin, -skin, the baby will actually more likely crawl themselves and look for um, um, a breastfeed. If the mother is open to that, then that should be facilitated, encouraged, and um, supported within the environment of her birth. We look at breastfeeding, we tell mothers it's the best way to feed our children, but we don't know how to do it. You know, I'm a dietitian, I'm a health professional. I actually didn't understand how breastfeeding worked till I had my own child. And that is an absolute disgrace. Like I should have been taught that in college. I should have learned it really in school. You know, you need to understand how it works to be able to troubleshoot some of the issues that can, that can arise. And another really big issue is that many of the health professionals in our hospitals are actually not trained either. And they don't know how to support new mothers who, you know, are like left with a little baby on day three, maybe when they want to feed every hour. And all of a sudden you're told that, you know, you're, oh, you have a really hungry baby. You need to top up with formula. Well, in fact, if you understood how the whole cycle of it worked, would understand that that's how the baby is telling your body to make more milk and that that's a really normal part. So I think there is a lack of understanding of normal breastfeeding behavior, especially in the early days, and that often women you know, have already started to top up in the hospital with formula, and that really just breaks the loop of making enough milk for your baby to survive. So it really, you know, I suppose formula top ups from the hospital really is the early stages of finishing breastfeeding before you maybe really want to do that. What we need to acknowledge is that yes, breastfeeding is natural, but it's also a learned skill. The Department of Health has always promoted the breastfeeding message. Yet, the Department of Agriculture continues to support the formula feeding and the formula feeding milk industry due to it being in their best financial interests. We need the government to have a united front in their support for breastfeeding. So the question stands, what is more important? The wealth of the formula industry or the health of our nation? I think we have a breastfeeding strategy that's now 11 years old. I think that needs to be reviewed, it needs to be updated. And also what needs to happen then is the political will behind any policy or strategy it needs resources, it needs funding, it needs, um, I suppose, everybody to be singing from the same hymn sheet from the point of view of driving the strategy forward. I think it would be really beneficial for all health professionals who come in contact with breastfeeding mothers to attend um, in-house training, be required to attend in-house training on, a, say, a yearly basis so that there is a consistent message and mothers can then leave the hospital feeling like they've, they've got all the information that they need to be able to get breastfeeding off to a good start. So yes, at the moment in our schools we're talking about healthy luncheons, we're talking about um, 
reducing salt, reducing sugar, which is absolutely fine. But a fundamental component of that is, as a starting point, babies really do deserve to be breastfed as well. Having more classes, having more lactation consultants, up, upskilling, you know, our cut, current medical staff, all of it will take more money. But, you know, I suppose it's looking at it, how much money can we save if we do that? GPs and midwives are often not exposed to an education system that can enable them to help mothers who wish to breastfeed and who may need professional advice and support. There should be a lactation consultant based on each ward and there should be one in every, every primary healthcare team as well. I think we need to normalise breastfeeding um, in the culture and, and that includes being in the schools as well. So I think there should be a concerted effort to include breastfeeding throughout um, a child's time in school. If you look at the legislation in Sweden, women can have up to 12 months and they will get paid maternity leave. So if we if we really are it is serious uh, from a public health perspective then that is what we need to do. We need to stop giving formula free in hospitals. I don't think that should happen. I think if you choose to formula feed you should bring it yourself. You should not be allowed to take it home with you. Uh, I think that's one place to start. I think I think at the 20 week scan, which is, in, it seems in most regions around the country, is like the anomaly scan or the big scan that women get, that there needs to be a dietitian and potentially a lactation consultant as part of that. I think if the moms can be more exposed to breastfeeding, you know, if there was more talk in the media, um, if there was maybe an incentive to breastfeed. Go to a breastfeeding preparation class. End of. <laughs> really, don't wait till the baby comes to prepare yourself because you may have had you know hours of labor you're very emotional it's all so overwhelming you would never choose to learn a new skill in in that environment prepare yourself before and set your support system up before it's just lovely you know i um, just give it a go and like to have that lovely hormone that oxytocin hormone released helps you get back to your uh, pre-pregnant you know your pre-pregnancy stage much quicker you know there's you have you just have a lovely feeling and oxytocin helps you fall in love with your baby and sure what nicer feeling than than to fall in love yeah it is a lovely experience you know and that I again started breastfeeding my child because I wanted him from a nutrition point of view getting it but I continued because I really really enjoyed it I loved it and it was so easy you know I didn't have to worry about washing and all of that so you know it is it is a lovely it really is a lovely experience for mother and baby and I think you know we are underselling it an awful lot. Breast milk has always been underestimated but it's one of the most powerful and nutritional organisms on earth. No lab can replicate it. No factory can bottle and sell it. It's time for us as a country to support and uplift breastfeeding mothers. It's time for us to put our children first. We definitely learned a lot about ourselves as people and about breastfeeding as a topic and the whole project like while teaching and explaining it to everyone else that we were trying to kind of get the message across to. Yeah. Our whole class, you know, we feel so strongly about it. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, so even that, if we could just see that happening with more people, you know, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. Pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> Thanks a million for watching. Go check out our social media. Mother Nature Knows Breast. Go share. Hashtag, Hashtag boobies for newbies. <laughs>